MetaDiplus 5.0 provides new capabilities to define rich language notations with dynamic behavior. In this webcast, we demonstrate visualization of dynamic ports and symbols. Many of the modeling languages have a concept of a port, certain place to con connect under certain rules. For instance, in digital logic, we can have different kinds of gates, like XOR gate. And such a XOR gate has a fixed number of places where you can connect. So here, for example, we can have two ports to come in and one going out. And it shouldn't be possible to draw somewhere else. And it shouldn't be possible to draw in to the port where we should have outgoing or weak version. So in the meta model, we shouldn't be able to allow these kind of models. While here the number of ports is fixed, it can be also dynamic. And by dynamic, I mean depending on the data in this model. For example, depending on the elements on this port or it in sub model. So here I have a five different kind of ports and I could have more, but then I don't need to connect them all. I can also type the ports. So I can have different type of ports, for example, digital ports, analog ports, messing batching ports, power ports, input output kind of ports. Ports are, ne are not necessary in the perimeter of the symbol. For instance, in extract transfer load kind of languages, we want to describe connections between data, like things are connected from A to one or B to three. And therefore we should be able to specify dynamic ports that are actually inside the bigger symbols. So then we can specify these kind of connections between the, the fields of the tables. We can also put the connections conditional. For example, only when we say that an element is a target kind of element, only then the port symbols are available and only then we can make a connection for them. And of course, we can use ports also just for visualization purposes, like show icon on before the, the attribute, for instance. Let's look next how ports are defined in MetaDit Plus. One typical example is what I call here a block diagram. So I have here a, a diagram where I have inputs and outputs. And I would like to add here more modeling concepts to add a port. So <clears throat> let's uh, access now the meta model and I access the meta model of my block diagram. So this language I'm using here. And for this language, I would like to add a totally new modeling concept. And I call it now a block. And this block has some uh, properties and I create here a new property called block name. And I actually to change. And, uh, and then I would like to, to use this block so that the blocks are hierarchical. So I could have a subgraph so that each block could be described in more detail in another block diagram. And then let's say uh, save this meta model change. So if I now go to my model, I now can add a new kind of block. And I call now the block a name because my meta model asked to give the name and I call it now a break, break system for instance. And this looks a little bit dull. So let's now change the notation for the block as well. So I access again the meta model and then I specify the notation for it. So it could be a rounded uh, black rectangle and the name of the <coughs> block could be middle uh, with a black color here. So now it looks like this. Now, because we added to our meta model capability to have a sub models, I can now create the sub model and I have here already an existing sub model visible here. Uh, it would be also nice to be able to see here in the notation that this break block has a sub model defined. While MetaDit of course shows it here in the, in the diagram editor, it would be also now nice to show it in a graphically. So we could add here uh, a small uh, rectangle and make this rectangle uh, perhaps conditional. And I can write here a condition that if there is a decomposition 
only then uh, uh, only then show this uh, rounded black uh, small symbol. So only if the condition is met, only then show the submodel. So if I now remove the submodel, now the symbol is also disappeared. Let's add it here. But we would actually like to do more. We would like to show in the perimeter of this break block the ports that are coming from this submodel. So for that purpose, I define here a template. And I choose here an existing uh, template definition tool. And I say that the inputs should appear here on the, on the left. And I, I can now say that the layout of them should be actually a little bit bigger. Maybe, maybe something like this. And uh, I can also then say what would be content of this template. And I would like to say that the content of this template is actually the inputs from this submodel. And here I can say what is the sub-object content, where it is where it is received. So it will be actually from the sub-block diagram and the input element there. It could be also specif specified in another way or even using code generator to specify it. I may also define how the symbol should be taken. Now I would like to show its own symbol. So I would like this green sub-symbol element to appear here in the template, but I could also choose it from the libraries. And I can also add use the layout uh, as, as I like and how, how it would like to, to go. For example, maybe it would be a little bit bigger and maybe I don't allow alignment scaling for it at, at all. And I can also uh, give here conditions when this uh, template is visible and when not. But let's say this is, this is enough. So now this is something what it should look, look like. So if I add it, now I can see that the symbols will appear here and I can a little bit scale it and then it looks still fine. So let's uh, also add uh, and copy this template for the other round. And now we just change it that it will be here output. So we are, we're now done. And if I, <clears throat> if I now uh, remove, let's say if I remove the vehicle speed from here and I go back to this higher level model, it will be also disappear from here. So um, what we can do next is we can make a connection here. So I can connect this to here but we haven't yet specified to our language that this kind of connection is possible. So let's do that uh, and create a binding here. So I would like to add here a connection. And this connection has two roles. I have a connects and input output connection. And uh, in this input output connection, I would like to have this driver. So the input and it can connect to this uh, break uh, block concept. So I choose here the block, but only it can connect through the ports. And now I'm here adding a dynamic port. And I would like to say that it can be only uh, input kind of port. So I have here very different kind of meta models, but I could choose here that it can only be input kind of port and then I can accept the change. So if I now want to specify the connection, I can now specify connection from here into this input. And if I add there now new ones, like a vehicle speed, it will also appear here to the symbol. And of course I can scale it like this. So here's an example, which is totally, let's say, imaginary, not real domain-specific language. Let's look then real domain-specific languages and how they apply uh, ports. I have here a uh, domain-specific language, uh, which is very basic kind of thing, goes to the <coughs> digital logic. And uh, in this language, I'm using actually uh, static uh, ports. 
So <clears throat> here you can see the different kind of AND ports, XOR ports, and now I can make such a connection. And as you can see, this uh, connection is, is uh, not correct. So it finds out now how, what are the legal places to connect. And if I connect it, now it also calculates things correctly. So if I change the value here into, into three, it calculates through the digital uh, logic to show the output here. This language has the problem that I need to repeat this half adder multiple times. Actually, the same thing is now repeated here seven times. It would be more nicer to reuse things like we do regularly in the software side. So I have also another version here which is using dynamic ports. So the same language, basically here, I can enter the values and it calculates here. But now the logic is coming from the submodels. So I have here the half adder logic and then I have here the full adder logic. And the full adder is again using this half adder logic. So I only need to specify this once, not seven times. I have also here uh, in this uh, definition uh, for the for the uh, full adder, I can also define dynamic ports. So as you can see here, in this circuit, there is only five ports coming in: A, B, C, one, which are these input ports, and two output ports. But if I add here a new output port, let's call it T now, and I ask it to change. Now it also appears here, and I can make a connection. So this is an example of a dynamic kind of thing. Let's look at other kind of examples. I have here an architecture modeling language, and uh, maybe the seating heating is a good example. This is an example of having a different uh, typing for the ports, and the meta model also knows the rules here. So for instance, if I want to do a client-server kind of connection between power ports, it knows that I can't make such a thing. But if I just want to say that let's create a connection from the here to here, it reads from the meta model and knows that this must be a power kind of connection. Uh, let's look further examples. Um, the, in this uh, architecture model case, the ports are coming from the sub model, but they may also be entered to the element itself. So for instance, here I can't make a connection between scan and resample steps because the resample doesn't have any input ports. But I can add now the port to this step directly. So I could add here um, a res, a pin name, which is a pixel data input port. And if I actually change, now the port appears here. And I can add them more if I want, but most importantly, I can now connect between these two uh, steps. Uh, let's look more examples. Uh, uh, example from uh, extract transferred load kind of languages where we would like to describe how, uh, how data is taken and combined. So here I'm using a uh, example where I have two different kind of tables and now I have here conditional ports. So if I say that this customer table is actually a source element, now the ports become visible here and I can start to make a connections. For instance, I could say that the last name is mapped to the last name of customer target table. I can also do more complex mappings by saying that let's take the street address and city address and let's combine them to be address of the customer. And yes, let's use the transformation rule combine. Or I can also add here later more, but let's take also the state into this rule. While these are shown here uh, visually, I can also order these. So if I say that the last name is actually moved to the top, also the ports uh, will follow. So now last name is moved top and the, the port is also coming from there. And of course, we can also use uh, these kind of models for just visualization. So let me take, uh, for example, UML here. 
UML may have a, a design models where the symbol is is uh, is taken based on the visualization is taken from the visibility of the symbol, visibility of the attribute operation. Like here, the ball game has uh, currently a protected visibility, but if I change it to private, then also the symbol over here changes. So in Metadata Plus, uh, you can define very rich languages. Metadata makes the development of rich notations and dynamic behavior very easy to do. There is no programming need to implement or maintain the editors as Metadata Plus adapts to your languages automatically, on the fly. Thank you for watching this video. Let's build great looking modeling languages.